So, Michael, uh, before we look ahead to the Dr. McKenna Cup final, you've got your Derry jersey on you. Uh, were you a bit disappointed with the result the last night? Um, I, could, I was, you know, from the simple point of view that Derry did so much right in the first half. But as you saw yourself, just the concession of those two goals just left them with a mountain to climb. But um, I mean, sort of a general summary of the McKenna Cup was that Derry have come on so much in the last two years, um, you know, um, in terms of progress. And the fact that probably Rory Gallagher's first game against Monaghan in 2020, well, December 19, they didn't look like beating Monaghan. And two years later, the, they were disappointed that they didn't. And I suppose that shows the level of ambition and, and sort of excitement there is with football in the county at the moment. Yeah, so you are excited then ahead of the league in the championship this year in Oakleaf County? I I certainly am, and you know, Rory, as he said at the end of his interview the other night, he is going with youth, and it's probably a good way to go. But you know, you're trying to get to the level of a Donegal or a Monaghan that have established players and established teams, and that's just where you have to get to. Um, and it doesn't happen overnight, but a decent start. Yeah, what'd you make of Donegal the last night, and what'd you make overall in their in their McKenna Cup performance now as they head to the final? Um, I'd say they'll be happy enough to win it and to get another game. They're probably not be that happy with their performance. Um, you know, you, you take the two goals out of it, and there wasn't much in it. But they still needed Murphy. I said to Charlie, you know, on on air, I says, you know. I'm surprised that he's playing in the McKenna Cup and I suppose there's that feeling where Michael wants to play every game. But they actually needed him. You know, he won a couple of kickouts and he made a he stopped a dairy attack one time when, when they were trying to go through the middle and um they, they were wasteful. You know, they, they kicked I think it was six first half wides by my count. And uh you know, and I think Derry outscored them three points to nil in the end of the game so they didn't push on um, I'm sure Donegal's focus is on one thing only and that's the championship they'll be disappointed last year losing to Tyrone seeing Tyrone going to win the Ireland so I'm sure Declan Bonner and Stephen Ratchford and Paddy Campbell and all the backroom team the championship will probably be their sole focus Yeah but from a Donegal point of view we, listen, we, we, no one Derry knows too that not to look too much under the McKenna Cup it's just about getting the legs right and getting game time uh, in the players but Declan Boner will be very much uh, welcomed that they're going to get another game uh, before before next week because there's nothing better than trying to get that match sharpness definitely so like a lot of people use the statement it's only the McKenna Cup um, it's a cliche that you can only win three competitions in a year and that's one of them and it didn't do Trone any harm whenever they were sort of building the team so games definitely and I think like Declan's used 31 players I think so far and 15 of them have started at least two games um I'm f you'll correct me here if I'm wrong I think from last year's championship Hugh McFadden Mc Stephen McManaman Big Neil McGee and Owen McHugh maybe missing I'm not sure if there's anybody else so they have probably most of what they're going to have uh you know on their sort of roster for the McKenna Cup yeah, there's going to be a couple of more players uh, missing this weekend as well. Uh, looks like Jamie Brennan set them miss out with that injury that, that he picked up uh, early in, in the match. And Michael Langan is, is among the players that's seen as, as a doubt too. So Declan Bonner will be calling on his, his students again, the LYT players that are playing colleges football at the moment back in on Saturday, Michael. I, you know, the, the colleges football is definitely, it's a very busy time of the year. Um like there was something, I, I can't remember the names offhand, but like last week there was players playing for the county and then turning out for their college in the same day. You know, like, like that's just, that's, that stuff's just crazy. Yeah. Well, well Jack McKelvey, Jack McKelvey is an example of that. They played for Donegal on Tuesday night, the Neve Connell player who, who you watched. And then last night, he lined out for UCD on a Wednesday night in the Sigerson. Two games in 24 hours. Is There's always been. Let's talk about player welfare. Where does that come in to the bracket of player welfare, Michael? I think that's, I think that's wrong. Um, every manager will have their own way of looking at things, but I think you have to look at the player and realize, like, you know, Jake McKelvey's just, he, he, you know, he's he's come in here. He's probably trying to make an impression, but 
he was in a better playing for his college and going back to only go when he's ready or if you make a decision look I'm not going to play for my college because I'm trying to break into the county but in a lot that's of a hard thing to do but for a young player to 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 turn down the chance of playing Sigerson whether it was his college for senior football or even the other side of that is turning down senior football to play for Sigerson because that player mightn't get the opportunity again, Michael. Yeah, like there's Oshie McWilliams. Um, I, I'm not sure the circumstances to be totally honest with you, but he's he's with, he's with Queens and he didn't play with Queens, but he played on Tuesday, on Tuesday night for Derry. I, I, I honestly don't know what the circumstances are where he pulled out. I don't know. But like Oshie McWilliams is probably a player who he's been a plus in the McKenna Cup. And he's probably looking at it and thinking, look, Rory made a statement that he knows 13 of his starting 15. He's maybe thinking, am I going to be one of the other two? Um, so he has a decision to make. Um, the difficult thing with Sigerson is, in a lot of cases, there's scholarships. Where you maybe you, you have to play for the uni. And there's that element as well. It comes back down to the fixture congestion. but it, And in the middle of fixture congestion, it comes down to man management and you know just not having players playing like that because where do injuries come from like remember was it what do you call the guy Keeney from four masters uh yeah look Keeney look, look Keeney like his story you know where did that come from just years and years of games and you know it's very hard as a young player to say no because all you want to do is play yeah. you know you want to want to cigarettes and you want to play with your mates and you want to bring them to the senior team but Maybe that's where, like these massive management teams that people have now, maybe there needs to be a welfare officer <laughs> that says, I'm sorry, but you can't, or a fizzy or something, but you can be lucky and not get injured, but by and large, it probably catches up eventually. Yeah. Uh, well, they're, we're in the thick of it uh, at the moment between colleges and, and McKenna Cup, and Donegal were due to play. Uh, Monaghan in the McKenna Cup in 2019 and if we recall Donegal actually pulled out of the competition right, yeah. they, were, they withdrew at the semi-final stage uh, Michael and one of the reasons was player welfare because there were so many players involved with Michael Murphy's LYIT and there were so many players that were out injured that Declan Moner just didn't have a have a squad to fulfil the fixture but he has a squad this weekend against Monaghan uh, Monaghan last week or on Tuesday night rather probably put out their strongest squad of the year and beaten Armagh in the in the McKenna Cup semi final, and they won it in penalties. I'll ask you about the penalties first, Michael, because should they be still ending Gaelic football matches with penalties? I don't think so. That's my honest opinion. Um, it just I, doesn't I, feel right, does it? It just doesn't sit well. It doesn't sit well, um, and I was always of the opinion that it's unfair to decide a game on the night. Um, for the simple reason is somebody has to lose in difficult circumstances. I was at a game in the flesh. Banner lost to Mullock Warren in an Ulster Club semi-final. Now, Banner had never been in Ulster before. And they lost on free kicks. And there's a young fella, Niall Moore, missed the last free. And he was excellent all year for them. And that was cruel. The Jamar Hall the other night is the same. Um, but I'm starting to think that you, de you probably do need to decide games on the night because of fixture congestion, like we just spoke about. So uh, I think you probably need some sort of a some sort of a plan B. And what's the alternative then? What's what's the alternative in your head? Well, this Michael, year who's... probably I, I don't know how we would go about getting this through at Congress. I don't know if Highland Radio can make a proposal and, and look for a seconder. But you know, at the end of the day, uh, Young Moore and Jamar Hall. Um, they were the villains. They 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 missed they missed their chance. Now, a McKenna Cup game probably wouldn't cost them a thought. But Banner missed out on an Ulster club, uh, the chance to win an Ulster club championship because of free kicks. I think you have to have a scenario where you're making a hero from somebody. Um, and hear me out here. Maybe you have a scenario where you have a a one v one or two v two duel. So, say for example, the other night Monaghan and Armagh had three three chances to score, so uh, the ball was thrown to an Armagh player and they did two on two and you had to score a point. And then it was Monaghan get the ball the next time. So instead of getting a penalty, you get possession. So it's 2v2 and 
you know, you imagine, like, say, you had Neil McGee and Steve McMahon, I went up against um, Conor McManus and Jack McCarron, and you see who scores, and then you, you pick a different two players or whatever, whatever way you do it, it's, it's complicated. But the bottom line is the person who makes the block to win that sudden death sort of element is as every much a hero as somebody who scores a penalty. Like, when you think about World Cup 90, the first two names going to my head are Packy Bonner and Daniel Tomofte, a penalty save and the guy who misses. And that's me growing up, and that, that jumps out at me from World Cup 90. Um, so I think you have to have a scenario where you have a skill element to it. Like, you can't keep playing 10 minutes and 10 minutes until the, until the lights go out. You know, but... It's complicated, but I think that's something that maybe needs to be looked at. Like, it would promote defending. It would promote decision-making. It would promote taking a man on. Um, it would bring entertainment. And it would be a lot easier easier sold than a penalty shootout, anyway. I think it would be. And, yeah. you know, again, for example, say it was, say it was, say it was Derry and Tyrone in the Ulster Championship this year. It was Brenton Rogers, Brenton Rogers and Potty McGrogan against, I don't know, two, two Tyrone players. And Potty McGrogan makes a block, and Derry go through the next round of Ulster. He's a, he's a hero. He makes a block, you know. And the person who's blocked down, whatever, say it's Conor Maynard, say he's blocked down. Some difference in being blocked down and missing a penalty. Yeah, it's more it's more to, to do with the coaching of the game. And again, I, I used to be anti finish on the night, but it rules out replays. It's interesting thinking. Uh, I, don't so know, I, I don't know. I don't know if you get a seconder from that summer. <laughs> Tell you what, Michael, you can start the you can start the ball rolling in Derry, and then let us know how you're getting on. We'll, we'll see if we can get you uh, a seconder, or somebody's going to do a third and a fourth on it from uh, from over on this side. But yeah, certainly interesting thoughts on on how it's an alternative to to the penalty shootout. Uh, back to Monon, I said that they were full strength. They're near enough full strength the last day against Armagh. Uh, we expect Monon to line out pretty much the same again as full strength as they can be, because they're playing in Haley Park, and don't they start their league at Haley Park the following weekend? Yeah, well, that's probably, that's probably a good way to, to get a game there. Like, I think Conor McManus is the only person who hasn't played in the Kenna Cup, you know, from their, from the, you know, from their main men. So, um, what better chance to get playing at Haley Park? You know, I know it's, it's a different opposition. Still a cup up for grabs. Um, you know, I think the Tuesday McKenna Cup thing probably stuck in everybody's throat. Whereas now Donegal and Monaghan have from Saturday until the following week to prepare for the league. Uh, you know, and Jamie Brennan's injured and Conor McCluskey's injured and that's unfortunate. But you've got a week to prepare. I think it's excellent preparation. It definitely is, you know, for both teams. And Declan Bonner and Bante can look at their look at their pages and think, who have we got? Who can we not afford to play? Who needs game time? Who played well? Like for example, say it a say it a say Mark Kern, for example. We'll put him in against Jack McCarn. See how see how he shapes up. Jack McCarn's listed a corner forward. We'll throw Mark Kern on him and just see. What better way have you to test players? So that's the value of the McKenna Cup and that's the value of Saturday for those counties. Yeah. Who are you tipping to one on Saturday? Who do you think's gonna come through it? Well, I mean, we Gilly Glyph thing the other day, I went for uh Went for Donegal if they can sharpen up their, their shooting from the other night, but uh, making predictions in the McKenna Cup is a complete lottery. <laughs> we we get them wrong anyway, but at least in the McKenna Cup we can we can rule out an excuse that it's a lottery because it depends on selection. Um, but probably Donegal have more improvement to do, and they won't be happy with Tuesday night. Like I'd say, Rory Gallagher deep down is probably happier than Declan Bonner this week. So uh, it depends how much of a thing that brings in. And it's back to your point, Oshin, about the colleges. It depends who's in and who's out. Yep. But Donegal, probably, maybe. We'll not rule out penalties, will we? It's possible. I will, I will maybe, we'll maybe have to go to watch it to see. TG mm -hmm. Cahar could be interesting viewing on Saturday evening to see. And, and if uh, I don't know what way you and we, Martin McHugh, would be fixed for commentating <laughs> penalties. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll be able to wing it so we would uh, listen moving away now from, from the football there is of course two important hurling games on uh, this weekend uh, both Derry clubs you have your Derry shirt on you uh, Slock Neil taking on Bally Gunner in the senior semi-final and Banagher are heading to the, uh, to the to the Airdome to play 
uh, Kil Mali of Kerry. Kimoyle, is that how, how it's yeah, pronounced? Too, yeah. um, what's the chances of the two dairy clubs then this weekend, Michael? Well, um, they're both up against it. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, like Bally Gunner and Slant Neil are coming from different, you know, they're coming from obviously, you know, the Munster and Ulster champions, but like they're pretty similar in terms of what they've done in their own county. Like Slant Neil have won nine championships in a row, Bally Gunner have won eight. In Waterford in a row, and I think uh, a four-point winning margin is as close as anybody's got to them in a final. So they're pretty much dominant, and a lot of those finals they won easy. Um, they've clocked up. Um, I think it's a scoring average of three seventeen, and they're across their three monster games, and they were pretty impressive. And uh, against Kilmalik, so Slaney will know exactly what they face. Um, Slantnail themselves were excellent against Deloy, completely, once they settled, they completely controlled the game and probably never looked at losing against Bally Cran. They've had a layoff, whereas Bally Gunner have got that other game just sitting perfectly for them. So that's where the counties come from. Bally Gunner have won three Munster Championships, Slantnail have won four, Ulster, but Bally Gunner have never, uh, and, and neither of them have obviously got to an all Ireland final. Speaking to Karma Goodhardy and, and, and reading Michael McShane as well, they're, you know, that's the goal. You know, they've got that wee bit better. They took a pacing from Kula. They were very, they're very good for long spells against the Piercing. There was that game against Bally Hill. They're slowly getting better, but this is a really tough test. Um, and Desi Hutchison came back from soccer and he's been brilliant for, for, for Bally Gunner all through the championship. And he scored 1 5 from play, I think. He's probably the Brenton Rogers of of Bally Gunners, who both are exciting and both are match winners. Sunil definitely won't. They'll get a lot closer than a lot of the teams have so far to them. My worry is that Desi Hutchison will just have a wee bit more attacking flair. I hope I'm wrong because I'm obviously a Sunil man and they've been regressing really well. Big big test. I hope I'm wrong, but Desi Hutchison maybe to swing it for for Bally Gunner. Okay, and what about Banner's chances against the Kerry side? Do know an awful lot about Kilmoyley. I know they have a few county players, you know, from Kerry. Um, they're managed by John Myler, who has a a, a long standing, you know, stance in the game. He, he is sort of he's been down there quite a bit. He go he, he he was on a podcast one time where he says he goes there a lot of time to to chill out from hurling, and he he's in charge of them. Daniel Daniel Collins has been scoring heavily for them. They play with a a sweeper. Doogie Fitzell plays as a sweeper and from talking to Banner manager during, during the week, Ryan Lynch, you know, they're sort of aware of that and they're trying to sort of suss, suss out how the best to go about that. Uh, a big test, Banner probably don't score enough by their own admission. They, they, you know, they've, they haven't scored enough. Their defence and goalkeeper have been very, very solid. Um, you know, and they've been in, getting goals at the right time through their championship and they have never won Ulster until this year. But there has never been an Ulster team in the final of this competition, to the best of my knowledge, I think. Maybe be proven wrong. And Banner have to overcome that. But I'm not going to be very popular in Ulster this week. Um, <laughs> probably going to go for Bill Morley. Are you I'm popular going undead, will you? Never mind this weekend, Michael. <laughs> oh, no, no, but it's one of them things where you just have to sit down and look at the teams and see yeah. who's, who's got what. But I don't know an awful lot about a lot about Kilmoyle, but um, just know that, you know the four or five players that played in the Kerry teams that were knocking around Joe McDonough finals. So that's that's a challenge that Banner have. Yeah. Okay. Listen, Michael. It's always good to see you. Good to talk to you, and uh, we'll see how how the football goes. Enjoy the action over the weekend. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Oshin.